Okay, so we are going to finally get around to doing a pod review on this pepper right here. And this is called the Candlelight Mutant Pepper. So, here it is. We're finally at the stage where we have at least one pod ready for review. And we talk a little bit about the plant and what I do know about it. You know, my experience so far growing this thing. So, so far this plant is a dwarf type of plant. It doesn't seem to be getting much bigger than what you see here. Though there were roots coming out of the bottom, but I actually ripped them up when I picked up the pot from the soil, which I didn't necessarily want to do, but we need to do a pod review on this. And I want to get this plant here in the centerpiece of what we're trying to talk about and give you some good shots, some good photo looks of it here it is to my hand it's very small it's maybe about three inches tall and it's really not big at all i'm not sure if i can get this thing much bigger than what it is but so far it is what it is and we are definitely going to be wintering this plant over so i could see how far we can develop it and is there any potential for this plant as far as its genetics go Here's a flower. Now, this thing made a ton of flowers. I'm talking a ton. Probably in the hundreds of flowers by now. But most of them never took. A lot of them all fell off the plant. And so, it doesn't make very many peppers. But there are a few peppers on here. So, hopefully I can get some seed from that. Now, I can't guarantee you I can actually offer seed for this online. Because I'm simply not getting enough seed out of this to really be able to offer anything. I might offer one or two orders for this plant just to give it to some of my, you know, some of my customers that come in there that are looking for some strange stuff. I might offer one or two orders and that's it. And that's going to be for members only. I'm not going to probably have enough seed to just offer to the general public, though I will make the video and the page available for view to the general public. I just simply ain't going to have enough seed to offer to everybody who's going to come in to want to buy seed from me. So I'll have some seed, but not very much, unfortunately. Here it is, this is what it looks like, as you can see. Give you a closer look at it. Give you a top view. It's a very, very strange pepper. There's actually two plants in here. If you look down below, there's one over there, and there's one over here. So these are actually two plants growing side by side. It's absolutely an anomaly. I am absolutely infatuated with this plant because I've never seen anything like this. And so I'll talk a little bit about why I think this pepper is the way it is. So in short, a long time ago, before plants used to reproduce through pollination, plants used to steal genetics from one plant to another. That's how plants evolved into what you got now. Did a video on this. I don't know if I uploaded the video or I'm going to upload it yet, but I did a video about this and I do plan on either getting it up or you can watch it. And so plants used to steal genetic from another plant. It's a very ancient type of feature that plants used to do. They came from algae, they turned into plants, then they turned into trees. And how did they do this if they didn't pollinate and create flowers yet? Well, it had to evolve into that. And so plants used to steal the genetics from one another simply by growing next to them. And then new species would appear. And this probably happened pretty rapidly in the beginning of whenever plants started evolving. So either or, that gene that's in that plant is generally dormant. But every once in a rare while, you do get that gene that decides to become undormant and it does something really strange and that's partly what I believe happened here again that'll be in another video you should watch that video or wait till I upload it and watch it when I upload it about how plant species evolve from an algae to what you got now the discoverer of this plant actually did contact me and they want to do an interview I just haven't had any time to actually uh, you know email them back and get the interview going on it so if you are still around from Finland, my friend from Finland, if you're still around, don't worry. I didn't forget about you. I'm probably going to have to wait until, you know, mid to late fall when things slow down with the garden. I mean, as you can see, I've got my hand full and we are just about getting ready for a lot of harvesting. And when I get into that stage, it, it requires 100% of my time because 
I, I have so many things that I have to do on top of doing gardening and everything else in my life. So my life gets very, very busy and cumbersome. So I do plan on doing an interview with you. I will contact you again. You just got to have hang in there. Just wait for me. If you do see this video, comment below. Let me know that you, you seen that and you heard what I was saying about it. So anyway... Here it is, here's the plant. You can see there's probably about three, so there's about seven peppers on there. I did pick a couple of them off already. I didn't really like the way they were forming. They were starting to get orange, so they weren't developing correctly, so I just removed them. Here's one here that might not be developing correctly. I'll probably end up removing that one, simply because that one's drawing energy from other uh, flowers that may develop into seed, and that one's probably got no seed in it, because the other two that I that I ate like that I had absolutely no seeds in them so that one's probably not going to have seeds either but some of these will probably have seed I am really hoping that they do but this one here is the one that's ready so we're going to have to cut that and I'll try to do it on camera without cutting my plant down look at that one in a million usually when you cut them they, they fling off like three feet away from you so here it is that is the candlelight mutant pepper and i'll show you what a candlelight pepper looks like and that's probably why uh the discoverer of this pepper named it candlelight mutant because he was probably growing candlelight peppers and this is when it ended up coming out but this is your general all-purpose candlelight pepper i grew this this year in tandem with this as a contrast so you can get to see what a regular candlelight pepper is looks like and this particular one isn't growing that big, but nonetheless, uh, that'll give you an idea on what it looks like. That's your regular candlelight pepper, and that is the candlelight mutant pepper. So they look very similar, and I would imagine it probably is a candlelight pepper. Being the person who discovered it, will be able to elaborate a little bit more on that and why they named it the candlelight mutant pepper. That's what it looks like. Trying to just get different lighting angles, different view. Try to zoom you up on it even. Give you a good view of that. You could see the calyx on it. Very different. You can see the calyx is very, very different on this than most calyxes that you're used to seeing. This almost looks like a solanum type of calyx, like a tomato. I, I don't know. It's very strange looking though. It's not the same as any other pepper I've ever seen. Just really strange looking. All right, so let's turn you around and give it a go. All right, guys, here we are. We are doing a pod review now on the Candlelight Mutant Pepper. And here it is. We're finally at that stage. This is a small one. They can maybe get twice the size of that. I doubt they'll even get that big, maybe one and a half times the size. And they do turn red. They go from like a light green color to... A, a slight orange and then immediately over to red and that's the cycle of that pepper so that's it right there and we are going to do a pod review on that right now going in i had to save the seeds for those there's only two seeds in that pod that's it I would imagine the other pods are probably going to be the same thing, if you're lucky to even get two seeds out of it. I want to show you that calyx really quick. That's what the calyx looked like. The flavor on it was a little bit tangy. It falls into the cane side of flavors of things. It doesn't taste like cane, but it does taste a little bit like the cane type of flavors. It's not sweet bell and it's not habanero fruity or anything. It, it falls into that cane type of flavors, but it doesn't quite taste like cane. It's kind of off on its own. And to be honest with you, I just did a review recently on the candlelight pepper, and it kind of does taste like the candlelight pepper, to be honest with you. And it falls into that flavor. So hopefully that'll answer as far as the flavor goes. Again, there wasn't much sweetness. The flavor of the pepper itself across the board was very low in flavor. Could be that it's just a very small pepper. I, I don't know. But the flavor was very low. It was very low in flavor. It was a little bit on the tangy side. Did have a slight sweet green uh red bell pepper type flavor very slight little tone of that 
And then, of course, the aftertaste was like a cayenne-type flavor, which is very nice. So the flavor was very low. It was very hard for me to detect the flavor. It was mostly all skin, to be honest with you. There wasn't much flesh on it. Now, as far as the heat goes, it does have a little bit of heat on it. It was very low. At least this one was. It was very low. And the heat was probably somewhere around 500 and 800 on the heat, on the Scoville, if I was to give it a Scoville rating. It was just really low. It probably can get a lot hotter. I would imagine these can probably go up to two, 3,000 Scovilles. I don't know. I haven't grown this plant enough for me to actually say that. But if it is a mutated form of the candlelight pepper, well, that, those candlelight peppers do got a little bit of heat on them. So if it's anything related to that, I would imagine that the heat can get a lot hotter. But this particular pepper, the heat was very low. As far as the way it's affecting my mouth, it's mostly affecting my lips. All the way around my lips, mostly the very outside of my lips. Not even the lips itself, but the very outside. I'm not sure if maybe I'm sweating a little and that's causing it. I don't know. That's where I'm really feeling it. Feeling it a little bit on the tip of the tongue, very lightly. That, t that burn is so light, it's actually lower than a pepperoncini. It's just barely undetectable, but I do feel something. No heat in the back of the throat. That's really it for now. That's the pod review for the Candlelight Mutant Pepper. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>